Hi everybody and welcome to Cope with Hope. Today I'm going to be interviewing Eric Palladino, who is my amazing co-star in the Disconnected series. Have you seen Disconnected? If you haven't, you must see it. We have four episodes out now and they're quite exciting. It's shot in four countries, five different time zones, six different time zones and five languages. It's really, really pretty wonderful. We have over 50 cast and crew and everybody is shooting in their own homes with proper social distancing. So here's Eric. Let me get him on. Waiting for him to connect. Thank you so much, all of you, for watching. Hey, Hi. Eric. Hi. How you doing, Andini? <laughs> I'm doing good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I was just walking around here in my neighborhood right now, just getting out of the house. Kids were driving me crazy this morning. What were they doing? <laughs> just arguing over everything and fighting each other and just, you know, the normal stuff that you deal with with three kids while in quarantine. <laughs> you know. okay. So how many days has it been for you? I think it's about 66 days for us today. Um, I guess what, March 10th, we probably started. So what are we, April 10th? Uh, 10th. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe 80, 80 days, right? 80 wow. Days. And, yeah. and what have you been doing? We're doing, we, we just started opening up our house to other people. Um, okay. It, it, but like my, you know, my best friend, Mike, and my other best friend, Jeff, uh, Mike is a bachelor, so he doesn't really go anywhere. He's been home the whole time, and he comes and he likes to cook. And he's my kid's god, one of my kid's godfathers. And and then my other buddy Jeff has two boys that my kids grew up with, basically. And so his two boys and his wife, who's a cancer researcher, uh, came and stayed with us um, okay. uh, for a weekend. So that and that was last weekend. But they they again they've been self quarantining as well. So okay. you know. I, I think at this point we kind of have to, it's unhealthy. It's getting to the point where it's unhealthy if the kids aren't around any other kids at all. Yeah. Um, you know, especially if they're just around me and I'm being really, I'm, I'm yelling at people left and right in the house. <laughs> 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 I, I, I have a New York Italian and, and uh, you know, and I can get uh, pretty yeah, mad. I understand. I'm a pretty passionate yellow yeah. mother I, as well, so I understand. <laughs> Yeah, okay. today we're, we're, you know, we're trying to really struck, you know, school's about to end here. And, you know, so we're getting worried about screen time and uh -huh. trying yes. to keep a, a minimum amount of time, you know, but there's such conflicting evidence and, you know, uh, about screen time and what the right number of, you know, as a parent, you're always yes. trying to balance everything and everything's a balance, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, you know, you don't know, no, you want to make sure you're doing the best you can at all times. And, yeah, uh, and then you find out that it's not so best. <laughs> That's very tough. I always say to my yeah. wife, ah, oh, you're doing such a great job as a dad, she says to me, and I'm, or whatever. And I'm like, I'm like, we'll see. I go, <laughs> <laughs> so, that is yet to be determined. Um, yes. Yeah. But I do consider it my most important job in this life. That's for sure. Yes. So. Yeah, having children is wonderful. So yeah. last night you made a tent for your daughter, I saw. Uh, <laughs> yesterday, yeah. I made it during the day. Uh, actually, uh -huh. it was two ago, but I think I posted the video last night. So, yeah, um, during the day I made it, and then we used it the, that night. And she loves it. She's, like, going out there and, like, sitting in it now and playing, you know, like, she, like you know, she'll play game, brings her dolls out there. I mean, it's it's amazing the difference between girls and boys. My daughter during this time, you know, she's you know four, and my boys are nine and eight, and so they have mm -hmm. each other. My boys a lot of the times to play with each other and stuff, and yeah. and and they play with her. They're very good big brothers, um, but uh, but my daughter can just like for two hours, three hours, just play you know imaginary games with her. Yeah with her dolls and stuff. Whereas my boys are, you know, it's got to get physical and, you know, and it's got to, there's got to be more. It's very fun. different. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me, different. Eric, tell me about your journey in like acting. How come you chose this career? Um, well, I started when 
uh, I was 13 in New York, um, and I'm 52 now. So to think about how many years I've been doing it sometimes is crazy. Uh, which, what does that make it? I'm just going to do the quick math on that. 30, 30, 14, <laughs> what am I, 38 years in? Is that it? Yeah, yeah. 38 years in? <laughs> uh, so, but I, um, I love John Belushi on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I was a big fan of his and and his uh, you know work and uh, and how funny he was and I loved SNL and and um, and then I saw Robert De Niro and Raging Bull and my, my family's from the Bronx and Raging Bull was about a Bronx boxer and I yeah. love boxing I've been boxing most of my adult life and uh, and so in that same year that kind of like made me go wow I just love what these people do they're actors you know like and my mom's a school teacher in new york you know public school system and and uh and my dad's a heating contractor in the bronx boilers and burners and and i you know nobody's in the entertainment industry and and i just thought you know i'd love to do that so i bothered my mom about it for about six months i think i want to be an actor i want to try acting i want to try <laughs> acting just like uh, she had no idea how to you know, even support that, especially back then without the internet, you know what I mean? You yeah. know, yeah. Uh, and then she found out about this like children's repertory company in, in a town like 10 minutes from my house in New Rochelle, which is actually where the epicenter of the coronavirus started in New York. Okay. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and then, um, you know, we, we um, started going there on Saturdays and it was, it was awesome. You know, we, I loved it every Saturday. My mom would drop me off at like 9 a.m., and I'd be there from like nine to one. And I just was like, I was all in right out of the gate, you okay. know, like improv mostly. And Beverly <laughs> G was my first teacher. She died of cirrhosis of the liver. We, we found out years later that, and I kind of knew she was always drinking. <laughs> she had like a bottle <laughs> thing of, and it was inside. It was vodka, I think. <laughs> but, uh, and then, and then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so our teacher was a drunk but she was good she was a good teacher yeah. uh, no, um, and then uh bill green was the other teacher uh uh and he was awesome too and and then i started doing like some theater a little bit downtown in new york and and then i did it in high school a little bit but my high school i didn't really want people to know i was an actor yet uh because okay. you know i you know growing up in new york we used to get i mean we used to get in a lot of fights and i was kind of a, a kid that got in the fights and and um and that was like kind of part of the life and and so i just didn't want people to think that i was soft by being an actor yeah. i think <laughs> so i kind of I hit it from my yeah. best friend about it but other kids i didn't really tell and it to and uh and then i and then i um applied to college and i got my bachelor's degree in theater i went to marymount manhattan college in new york city and, um, you know, uh, that, that school was an all girls college, Catholic college, mm -hmm. except that there was co-ed for theater and dance majors. So I went to an all women college, basically. Uh, yeah. and it was three, when I graduated, it was 330 women and me. <laughs> <laughs> 330 women and you. Yeah. Wow. You know, you know, uh -huh. um, so, uh, yeah. that was, um, you know, uh, that was really good times. And, and, you know, the funny thing is that as a result of going to that school, um, you know, some of my closest friends are, have women are w women. And, and the reality is, I, I think I've always been more comfortable uh, being fully myself, fully myself yeah. around women. Yeah, you know, and the joke was that people, all my friends are like, how many girls did you date? You know, how many girlfriends did you date? <laughs> and it, you know, yes, yeah. that, there, was date, there was definitely dating and stuff. But more within the theater, like major people, we were, yeah. you know, we all hung out with each other, and, and you know, yeah. we were mostly just all good friends. Um, oh, that's great. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah. and it was really good times and stuff. So, and then that was it. And then out of college, I started auditioning, and and I sang in rock bands for years, hard rock bands for years, and uh, and then around twenty five, twenty six, I got my first sitcom uh, when I cut my hair. So out of college, uh -huh. I had long hair. And I wasn't yeah. going to cut my hair. I liked having long hair because I sang in bands. And I was like, I'm not cutting my hair until they pay me to cut my hair. So I didn't really work <laughs> at a cop. Although, that um, I was, although I'd already probably put in my 10,000 hours. You yeah. know, the, I always say the difference between me and other actors that came to L.A. when they were 25 was 
I'd already put in my 10,000 hours. So I was yeah. like, good, not great, but I'm, I was good out of the gate. I'm you know ready. I mean? Yeah. Yes, because I started at 13. You know what I mean? And I, yeah. Yeah. and no one knew me until I was 25 in Los Angeles. So like, yeah. I had this 12 year period of, of being an actor, working yeah. and having fun with it, not taking it too seriously. So when I came out, I started working immediately. Um, okay. and I did mostly like sitcoms and like the New York dumb Italian guy that was cute. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, the Joey from Friends, the Tony Danzig yeah. role. Yeah. And, uh, but very quickly, I, I knew that I didn't want to be that all the time. Yeah. Um, I wanted to make sure that uh, um, I wasn't always stereotyped into that. Yeah. Uh, so, um, and that was super important to me. So I, I, you know, initially to get in, I kind of played into that. Um, yes. And then once I was in and had an agent and people knew who I was, I, I really tried to kind of branch out from that. Uh, mm -hmm. And I still continue to do that to this day. Although, um, you know, I, I love playing my stereotypical New York Italian guy sometimes. Yeah. You know, yes. I just like when it's a little bit more layered. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I love you know, what you do here. I love what you're doing in Disconnected. Oh, thank love you. your I love, role I love what you're doing in Disconnected. I mean, <laughs> thank like, you. It's crazy. The, the cast yeah. is like... You know, making us long time experienced actors look bad. <laughs> it's, it's like I said to my wife, who's never acted before in her life. I'm she's like, amazing. I go, you, you, she's, she's amazing. A, you know, she's, a, she's in the fashion industry and, yeah. you know, a realtor, you know, and uh, <laughs> a real estate agent out here. And, and she's like, she's, she's, I said to her the other day, I go, in, in, when we shot the scene from the third episode, I go, you're as good as any good actress I've ever worked with. Yeah, she's, and, and your she, son, your son. Well, man, he was good. So, yeah, he so, was so good. He's so subtle and your wife is fantastic. Yeah. And yeah. yeah but so. it's funny when I said to my wife, I go, you're as good as any good actress I've ever worked with. You know what she said? She what? said, well, I'm not great. <laughs> I, go, I go, well, what do you expect to be? Meryl Streep? You've never done it before. <laughs> like, like, I'm not great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so what's but, your favorite, which is your favorite um, role that you've done up to date? Besides Disconnected. Um, oh. Um, uh, uh, my, uh, um. I mean, I have a favorite few, and I would say that, like, yeah. uh, I mean, Disconnect is up there. I really like this role and uh, a lot. Um, I, I, uh, I would say that a series that I that I starred in that Stephen Bochco produced called Over There was written by uh, um, Chris Duralmo, who wrote uh, Mississippi Burning Academy Award winning uh, yeah. script, and uh, and I played the sergeant of a squad of soldiers fighting in Iraq. Um, and uh and i played sergeant this character was called sergeant scream and that that for me like it was it was probably one of my best roles uh you know it's one of those roles that like oh if it was a hit show it probably would have made my career kind of thing yeah but it, yeah. Was a hit show, it only lasted for a season yeah. people uh you know th there's a similarity to our show with that show because that show was about you know the war in iraq and this squad of soldiers fighting in iraq while the war was actually going on Okay. You know, wow. and, and so, you know, the show got really good reviews, but and it's called Over There in case anybody wants to watch it. Um, and it was in 2005. Uh, okay. uh, but I but people weren't really ready to watch a show about the war while the war was going on. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, that show Disconnected is, you know, about, you know, the virus. Yeah. While it's going on, point, you know, and, I, yeah. you know, people maybe too close to it right now to watch it you know what I mean? i'm hoping that you know people you know start watching more uh you know and get to get, you know we get a little press out of it and more people watch it because i think it's such a well done show and and matt and matt lee weiler and anton lanes the creators of the show have you know and their team have done an astounding job to yeah. to make it happen you know what i mean yeah. it's sort of it's sort of crazy how uh you know um you know the production value the, one of the things that i always ask when someone asks me to do like an independent film yeah. the first thing that i usually ask you know after i read the script and if i like it you know it, is i say well what's your budget you know because <laughs> that that yeah. place i'm not asking it for how much money i'm gonna get i'm yeah. asking for the production value yeah because if they've got no money it's very rare if they don't have any money it's very rare that the production value Will is be good, good. 
Yeah. Then and then when you're an actor, that's like, you know, uh, you know, you have to protect your career a little bit. You know what I mean? And and you know, I, I you know, I've worked hard on having this long career, and yes. so the quality of the stuff I'm in, I'd like it to be high, the production yes. value, or at yes. least high if i do an independent movie that looks really bad and i'm in it no matter what my acting looks like no matter how good i am in the scenes i'm still going to come off badly I'm still yes, gonna look, i agree yeah if it looks like an amateur production you could put the best actor in the world in it he's going to look like an amateur so i just yeah. can't put myself in that position anymore yeah. Yeah. um you know so i'm acutely aware of that stuff when i enter it and matt's one of my best friends so when matt asked me to do this i was definitely a little concerned of how it would look yeah. But I also know Matt, and he's he's the only person in the world that I would have probably taken this endeavor on with. You know what I mean? That he yeah. would, no matter what, do everything he can to make it look it, the way it looks. You know, it, what looks I mean? yeah. it looks amazing. It looks amazing. Looks amazing. It looks like yeah. you know. It looks like a legitimate TV show. Yeah, um, you fun. know. Especially once, you know, once those people in India got rid of that iPhone 6. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Man, thank God that happened. Yeah. <laughs> and what a difference it made. What a difference. It's crazy. Yeah. Isn't it? yeah. So, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, I, so... I, doubling back on like what made me get in the business and what keeps me going in the business, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's tough being a regular, you know, working actor that, you know, yes. has a family of five, you know what I mean? And, and, yeah. you know, I worry about bills and making a living, you know what I mean? And, and, uh, you know, consistently, you know, uh, it's up and down, up and down, up and down, you know what I mean? And it's funny. I said to a buddy of mine about the virus, like, and we were both another actor. We were both talking about it. I'm like, I go, this is the life that we are. It's not that different for us. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah. congrats that there's no hope right now because there's no production. But, you know, and actors live and die by hope. Um, yes, so, you yes. Know, you know, if there's no hope for auditions, you really can go down a bad rabbit hole. Yes. Uh, so we understand what everybody's going through because this is our life. Our yes. life is always, uh, you know, all of a sudden we're not working for six months and where's the next paycheck in a concert so, yeah but what everybody's yeah. going through in the world is very similar to what an actor's lifestyle is all the always time. yeah all the time you know, yeah all the time now you know yeah. it's it's obviously for a working actor there's that hope that's always there that carrot that's dangling for the next potential job uh you know and that yeah. kind of keeps you alive you know it's like uh yeah. like shawshank redemption you know one of my favorite movies that's ever been made frank darabont yeah. You know, uh, you know, uh, he, he uh, you know, hope is a good thing. It said in it, right? Yeah. And without hope, you know, it's why people, you know, you know, you know, people that are struggling with, with no money and you know, living on the streets, they turn to crime because they have no hope. People don't want to be criminals. No, they become criminals because there's no hope. You yeah. know what I mean? You know, uh, and I always get a kick out of some of my elitist, you know, friends and. And, you know, uh, I'm not going to say which, anyway, I'm not going to go to political, <laughs> but, but, you know, yeah. they're like, uh oh, you know, look at how they're behaving. They're behaving. I'm like, you know, they're behaving because they have no hope. Yeah. You know, you know and I want to see how you'd behave if you didn't. In that same situation. Yeah. You'd have a family that, you know, had money and, you know, yeah. sent you to colleges. And if you lost your job, you know that you can rely on them for you know, whatever, a thousand dollars to get you by that month. Let me see how you'd behave if you had nothing backing you. Yeah, ever. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. You know, and, you know, uh, you know, even your, you know, your emotional, you know, consistency. I mean, that, that in itself, you know, some people lose hope because they're, you know, they're, 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 you know, uh, they're, you know, the chemical imbalance is off. And, yeah. and so yeah. then they hope that way, you know what I mean? And so, you know, there's people that, have nothing to help them with that and they're alone yes. and, yes, and so, yes. you know and they, they don't have a support system around them to get them through yeah. it and even yeah. people that have a support system struggle with it too imagine if you had no absolutely you know what i mean so yeah. I, I, you know um anyway so but the dangling of the carrot for an actor and you know and and it keeps us going and that's kind of what this you know, uh, what the only advice I give to people is like, you know, we're going to get through all of this, you know, and, and, 
and you got to just look towards that that little light that's shining down the end yes. of the you know at the end of the tunnel you know Absolutely. And, and get that the most see that light as best as you can because if you go i mean look i just like for example before we started this phone call i was literally so i could curse here i'm gonna curse i was so fucking angry <laughs> when i left the house i mean i was just pissed <laughs> off and my wife was like just go for a walk and i was like i'm going for a walk and now you've come for a walk good go for a walk you know and and you know just to cool off a little bit and you know and we, we have an awesome you know like i couldn't imagine like if we had like a small little little apartment with five kids i, I just you know i feel so lucky and fortunate yeah. uh to be you know it, it, you know with my family that's you know they're pretty awesome you know but you know we get on each other's nerves and yeah that both, happens everywhere you know, you know, and uh you know my wife if she's watching this which she might be i love you <laughs> still oh. <laughs> <laughs> you better say that properly i love roman and enzo and I really love Paloma. Everybody knows I love Paloma, the daughter. <laughs> That's not fair. Girl. You have to love My them. My four-year-old girl can do no wrong. She can do no <laughs> wrong. <laughs> Even when she left the tent and went back into her bed. Yes. No. No problem. <laughs> She's like, whatever. Even if she knocked the tent down, not a problem. I'd be like, oh. <laughs> my wife always makes fun of me how I talk to my boys versus how I talk to my daughter. My boys will be like, "Can I get more iPad?" I'll be like, "No, get out of here." You know? <laughs> and Paloma will be like, "Can I have some more iPad?" I'll be like, "Well, not right now, sweetie. In a little bit, baby." <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Okay, oh, so boy. Eric, you said you said you're in a you were in a band. Yeah, rock what's, band. What's your favorite rock, rock song? Oh, my favorite hard rock song. Um, I mean, that's a tough one. I mean, okay. I, okay, you sing know, one I mean, of the favorite. I mean, you know, in high school, my high school quote was Aerosmith's "Dream On." You know, okay. I think that's one of the greatest rock songs that ever was, was ever written. Yes. Um, you know, obviously, "Stairway to Heaven" is one of the greatest rock songs that yes. ever. Um, um, you know, I mean. You know, modern bands. You know, I mean, I love. I, I you know, I love Foo Fighters and you know, Queens of the Stone Age and uh, you know, but but I love Coldplay and like I love you know, I love Bruce Springsteen. As I got older, I've really fallen in love with Bruce Springsteen, Beatles. You know, it's funny. I wish that when I was younger, I wasn't so into hard rock. I wish that my because my older brother was a guitar player too, and I played in a band with my oldest brother for years, yeah. and he was very into hard rock. But I, I, had, I wish that like people played me, you know, Depeche Mode and, and uh, you know, uh, a little bit more, you know, left of the middle rock and Springsteen. I wish I came yes. to Springsteen when I was a teenager. Yeah, I think I would've, it would have influenced me music in a musical way because yes. my voice. Will is you poor. sing two lines from one of your favorite songs? One uh, of well, one of my favorite songs is is I, I sing to the kids is. Um, Colin Hay, uh, uh, I think it's called "Just Won't Get Over You." I always say it's that, but I don't think that's what it's, the title is. But it's, um, but I sing it to them sometimes when we go to bed. Uh, so please uh, sing to I, us. Well, I drink good coffee every morning, made from a place that's far away. And when I'm done, I feel like talking, dear. But without you here, there is less to say. No longer moved to drink strong whiskey. I wrote back the end of time, and I knew. Cause if I lived till I could no longer climb my stairs, I just don't think I'd ever get over you. I just don't think I'd ever get over you. Thank you, Eric. That was so <laughs> lovely. Thank you so much. It was great talking to you. Great um, talking to you too. Really, I feel very, very privileged and thrilled that you said yes. And go home and give your kids a big hug now. <laughs> <laughs> you love them all the same. I will. I might make them run up and down the street first. <laughs> no, 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 no.